And good morning, YouTube, the lofty bike here. I'm up at Damrose again. Got another little bike for you to go. I've been waiting to ride this one for a while as well. As you know, I like little bikes. It's, this one's perfect for the ones that are a little bit shorter leg. Probably not suitable for me being a lofty biker, but for all you out there who are a little bit short in the leg, this could be the perfect answer to your first big bike. It is the Honda CMX Rebel 500. It's the 2022 model. This one's got a couple of extras on. I'll tell you all about them when we do the walk round. Let's get my helmet on. I'll see you in a minute. Good morning, YouTube. Look at this little beauty. It's got a few extras on. Very nice. 2022 Honda. CMX 500 Rebel. We've got a side key. Stretch it on. Well, what do you think of that? Get my gloves on. Give it a thrash up the road. Well, a bimble up the road. Ooh. Nice reassuring burble there from the, the 500 twin. Away we go. Okay, YouTube. It's quite classily finished, this is, you know. I like the I like the finish on it. I do really do. Everything's pretty tidy, pretty pretty nice. I've just put a spot of fuel in because it was empty. It's only had um, it's only had a test ride, so I've just got to break it in steady. I'm just going to razz up the road and then we'll have a walk around. And I'll tell you more about it. But in general, my first impressions are. It's a nice place to be. It's a little bit short in the leg for me, of course, because I am 6'5", and I have got long legs. So, away we go. It's got quite chunky tyres. The first thing I notice is these bloody indicator switch below the horn. I don't know why I underdo it, they just, you know, it's as if they've got to be different, isn't it? So here we go. Oh, bit of foot scraping. Very low, the pegs. There we go, up the lane. I'll just build the rev slowly. It's a nice dash. LED, but it is a nice dash. Good morning YouTube, here I am the lofty biker, hey with this little beauty, 2022 Honda CMX 500 Rebel, as you know I took the big boy out last year, the 1100, it's nice to get my hands on this little 500, what do you think? Okay I'm very tall, I am big, right, nice seat, proper old fashioned spade seat, really like it, it's like a shovel, beautiful foot room there you go there's no cutaways it's a pair drop tank so it doesn't matter at all how about your knees whether you're tall or not okay it's quite an acute angle with me if you were vertically challenged you'd have no problem reaching the bars reaching the pegs everything falls to the hands really really comfortably it's a nice little bike proven engine cracking little 500 twin this bike will go quite well if you're looking for your first big bike and you are five foot five foot one five foot two up to five 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 six this could be your perfect first bike how about that let me tell you about it so there you go there you have it let's have a bit of a walk around this one's got the pannier racks on and the little bags very nice actually quite like them it's in a matte blue don't know what colour blue you'd call it metallic -y, dark -y, I don't know strange blue it's all right though LED lights in fact it's got LEDs all around chunky tyres look at those chunky tyres 
Yeah, in line with the cruiser, we've got the side mounted switch. I'll show you that in a sec. So there we go. That's the proven 500 lump. It's been around a bit. It's a cracking engine. Virtually unbreakable. Lasts forever. So let's switch it on and give you a little listen. So here we go. Side mounted. Kill switch. There we go. Quite a big cannon on the side, look at this for a cannon. Okay. Let's kill it. Here we go. Typical 500 twin sounding. I don't know if you'll see the lights. So we've got this new idea where the indicators are on permanently. And they flash, but the other one stays on. Can you see that? It's a new thing with Hondas and a lot of new bikes. So let's start. Can you see the dash? We've got a round dash, LCD. Time, big digi speedo, gear indicator, fuel gauge across the bottom. It's showing, um, it's on two miles since I put the petrol in. How about that? Not bad at all. We've got a little button here for trip at trips, odos, whatever. So coming across. We've got um, no adjustable levers. We've got a big kill switch, thumb starter, hazard warnings, cable throttle. No fly-by wire on this baby, so there's no cruise control or nothing, cable throttle. So coming across to the side, we've got high and low, no pass, just high and low. Oh, there's the pass. High and low, push the pass, horn, yeah, typical Honda horn, indicators below the horn, not very friendly for us normal people who get used to it the other way around. I suppose if you rode the bike regular, you would get used to it. Lockable fuel cap. Hmm, right. Let's fill you in on a bit of info. The CMX500 Rebel, 471cc liquid cooled, double overhead parallel twin. 46 brake horse, 8,500 revs per minute. 32 foot pounds at 6,000 revs per minute. It's a six speed gearbox with a chain drive. Low, 690 seat height, and it's comfy. Weighing in at 190 wet. That's not bad. Fairly small tank, but it is economical. The tank, 11.4 litres. That's what, two and a half gallon. 41 mil, standard forks, normal standard forks, telescopes. So up front we've got these big tyres, they're Dunlops. Dunlop tyres, don't know what they are, they're a 13090, that's fat. 16, we've got a single disc with a Nissin badge twin pot caliper. Moving round the back, if you can see, under the bags. There's the chain through the other side. We've got a 150 80 16 with a 240. So it's a 296 disc on the front, 240 mil disc on the back. We've got LED lights all the way round. Pillion pegs, cannon launcher, little dicky seat for the passenger. This would be power powerful enough to pull a passenger, so don't worry about that. So what we got then? £6,199 on the road, 6.2, it's not bad is it really? You know, you're buying a Honda, solid steel tubular frame, this one has got a couple of extras. So we've got this little dicky screen, screen 340, it's a little bit rich in it that, 340 for that dicky little screen, I think that's a bit on the pricey side. But on the other hand, we've got these little panniers, the racks and panniers, uh, they come in at 350 quid. Now I think they're terrific value. 350 quid for a pair of panniers. Not bad at all. You could stick a roll bag on the back. You could go tuning. Don't doubt you could tour on this bike. So, the best part of seven grand as it's looking here. Racks, screen. As I say, you can't have a cruise control. There's no fly-by wire. It's cable clutch. 
you know, it's proven technology. It's not latest cutting edge technology, it's just proven technology. I would think a fender extender would be required and I'd think something round the back would be required. The swinging arm looks fairly exposed. Anyway, I'm going to put my helmet on, take it a run round the lanes and show you what I think of it. Overall, I think the build quality is very, very good. See you in a minute. Okay, YouTube, I'm back. Let's go ride. Always a fruity sound. Down to the island. Let the jeep come. Should we go around the island? Just see what it's like. Second gear. Yeah, touching, feet touching. Hold the line. Not bad for. Great big fat tyres. Right. So we've got a slight downhill into a national. Let's build the rev slowly. It is a new bike. See if we can run it in a little bit. A lot of people ask about running new bikes in. I think it's just a bit of having a bit of sensitivity and being sensible really. Build the rev slowly, throttle off occasionally just to allow both sides of the piston to run in on the bores. So we're in top gear, I'm just building it up slowly. Fairly vibey through the bars. We're just shy of national, holding the line nicely. Beautiful sunny day today in Cornwall. I've even put my jeans on today and my summer jacket, how about that? So, when you're running in, nice and sympathetic, just build them up slowly, use the gears a lot. Don't forget to throttle off, like I say. Oh dear, we've got a lorry stuck. Okay, so we got rid of the lorry. There's no, uh, there's no tachometer. So really, you've got to feel Feel the revs through the seat, through the handlebars. Just let it build slowly. Into top gear. This hill's slightly steeper than you think. But there's, there's plenty of grunt there. There's, there's, you know, this, this is a very, very proven engine. It's one of Honda's, oh, it's, it's one of their dark secrets. The 500. You know, you, they've, they've used this on lots of platforms. One of the most successful being the X, the one that's a bit like a adventure bike. So if you're tall, go for the X. If you're more in the middle, you've got the R, which is the road version. And then if you're a little bit short in the leg and you fancy a cruiser, this could be the baby for you, the Rebel. Yeah, it's a lovely little bike, nice place to be. As I say, it's a bit tight in the hip for me. I'm slowly getting used to that uh, indicator. Building the old muscle memory up. So then here we go. Initially you think the seat is quite firm, quite hard. But as I said, it's like a shovel seat. It's, it's your typical sort of bobber style triangular shape with a bit of a scoop in. I think it's very nice actually, very comfortable. I could live with this. I know it's a bit small for me and I probably look daft on it, but it's a nice place to be. As I say, I'm not giving it much rev. Don't need much rev down the hill, just build it slowly using the gearbox. Bed those gears in as well, up and down the gearbox. I think the worst thing you can do with a new bike is to labour it. You know, sometimes excessive revs is probably more beneficial to the engine than labouring. You don't really want it stumping about. So I would use the gearbox. I quite like running bikes in. It's quite good fun. As I say, all this thing about you have to do this for so many miles and that for so many miles. It's up to you. 
I always think new bikes now, modern bikes, the machining is very precise. They put oil in when you first have them, that, that's your sort of braking oil. It's uh, slightly different to what you would normally put in your 1050 or your 1040. That's why you have to have it serviced after 600 mile really. It's, it's, it's just to get rid of that braking oil. So here we are coming round to the traffic lights. Oh, they're on green. Never in a million years. We're just coming across nice and steady, third gear, 35. Build the rev slowly. Back up to 50. Very nice. We shan't be screaming this one today, but we'll build the rev slowly. Here we down into the 30. The one good thing about smaller bikes is that they're so much easier to ride in 30s, to commute on. Can't believe what a beautiful day it is today. It's about 17, 18 degrees, the end of May. I'm trying to keep my head still for those who moan about me, wobbling my head about. But you do have to do <laughs> lifesavers occasionally and you do have to look at your speedo occasionally. So I'll do my best on the wrong side of the road, darling. That's what they put white lines down it for. That's the problem down in Cornwall. The standard of driving can be a little bit poor to say the least. There's the bus. So we're just tickling through 27 miles an hour. Mirrors, Mickey Mouse ears, they're quite good actually. They're as good as anything I've ridden lately. I suppose it's because you've got the slightly higher, wider bars and they stick out nice and wide. They're good, good mirrors. That's why they started with round mirrors on bikes because they're probably the best. They use all sorts of funny shapes now but I don't know whether they're any better. I'll just take your time, we've got a Fiesta coming the other way. Using the gears a lot, keeping the revs nice and steady, nice and even in the middle of the rev band. Or just wait a sec. As I say, it's so low, it's very easy to get your feet down. If you are going to take the cruiser route, you do find a lot of people who are sort of vertically challenged sort of do like cruisers because they're low. And I don't blame them. Cruisers are fantastic. They're a great place to be, nice and relaxed. You don't get that ego trip. You just take your time, sit back, look cool. If you are taking the cruiser route, I think this could be a good step. I know you've got the Vulcans and whatever, but to be honest, this is a cracking, cracking little bike. And it's that engine, it's that CB500, you know you're going to be able to ride this probably three, four, five years, build your confidence, do a few miles, like I say, maybe even do a tour. And then you can get yourself a little bit, something a little bit bigger, a thousand cc or whatever. Or a popular one I think is going to be this new Harley Sportster. Does seem a nice bike, doesn't it? I'd like to ride that. So here we are in the National. We'll build it nice and steady again, as I say. No need to over rev. You'll still get the speed you want. Because it's a, like I say, it's a fairly torquey engine. So there we go. I've hardly touched the revs. And we're doing 60 mile an hour in sixth gear. Rolling down the lanes. Well, what more do you want? Who says you can't have fun running a bike in? Suspension's a little bit on the harsh side over some of those bumps, but that's what you get with twin shocks. But they're okay, it's okay. There's not much fork dive, so that's one good thing. And I'm hoping, um, typical cruiser style, it'll have a good back brake. So here we come down to Trevisco. The rhododendrons are out, look at them, they look fabulous, don't they? 
Right, we'll take it. A right turn here, down through the town. Slow manoeuvre, just balanced on the back brake. How about that? Nice and steady. No need to put your feet down. I'm gradually getting used to that indicator, as I said before. So we're downhill, third gear, just letting it tick over on its own revs. 27, 26 mile an hour. Not a lot about today. Driving up here, the main roads are very busy, but some of these back roads are quite pleasant today. We'll take it down through the town and uh, we'll have a bit of a brake test, shall we? Lovely blue sky. One of the things you appreciate as you get a bit older, rhododendrons and blue sky. <laughs> Okay, I'm an old tosser. Let's just build the revs again slowly. Tip it in. You do have to be careful. If you tip it in a bit quick, you can feel your boots touching down. Okay, so we're on the flat. There's nothing about. It's all clear behind. We're doing 40 mile an hour back brake. Uh, I'd say for a cruiser that, that is moderate, nothing special at all. They're normally better than that, but they are pretty new. They've not really been bedded in properly yet, so they could improve. The pads feel a bit harsh. Round the bend again, past the quarry. Yeah. Same again, we're getting up, up to 40. Nobody about, front brake. Yeah, it hauls you up. It's not too bad. You have to give it a full hand. None of this messing around with two fingers. It's not that good. So round the corner, nice and easy. We're going down the hill. We'll get it up to 40 again. Front and back. More than enough. Yes, more than enough. I think these are the sort of brakes that the more you sort of bed them in, the more you use them, the better they will get. I've got to say, these handlebars feel really comfy. As I said, there's a bit of vibe. Nothing too obnoxious, but they're lovely. They seem to be well positioned. If the if the pegs were slightly more forward, like on the 1100, it'd be perfect. But they're trying to keep um, the ergonomics for people that, like I said, five foot to five foot six, seven, and I don't think you'll have any trouble, none at all. You'll be very surprised. You'll enjoy yourselves on this bike. Here we come down over the bridge, drop a couple of cogs, run the back of that piston, can you feel it? There we go, third gear, give it a little squeeze. I might even get an overtaking. Yeah, here we go, nice and steady, you don't need to go mad, you don't need to thrash it. Plenty of power overtaking a car doing 30 and a 60. Holding a really nice line. We're only doing 50, 55. There's no point in uh, overdoing it. It's not that type of bike, to be fair. You want to just sit back, enjoy yourself, have a bit of a pose. This could be the one for you. The colour's growing on me, to be fair. I'm not a big fan of matte, but I quite like this blue. I suppose you could call it like a a titanium blue. It's okay. There we go. Building the speed nice and steadily. Little squirrel, don't do it, Mr. Squirrel. I don't want to run you over. He changed his mind. He ran back. Don't worry. I didn't do the squirrel. Throttle's very nice considering it's uh, a cable one. It's like a safe proven technology you don't really have to worry about Hondas especially the 500 big nice big back brake pedal falls right under your boot lovely so here we go third gear 
we're going to go down the hill we'll give it a bit of a third gear roll on see how it is nice and steady not too much revs as you know this bike will probably do 90 mile an hour without trying I'm not going to be trying anything like it I'm just going to sit down the hill ticking it over at about three and a half four thousand revs doing 60 it's a comfortable 60 it will go quite a bit faster but like I say this is a proper new bike we'll change lanes we're all clear behind let the revs drop off There we go, just run the back of the piston in the same. I haven't touched the brakes, I haven't needed the brakes. I've just allowed the engine just to slowly come down. There we are. Island's busy. Bit of indicator. You don't, you don't need a lot of effort on the handlebars because like I said, they're quite wide. The leverage is good. So here we go, nice and steady up the hill, nothing special. I'm not going to try and see what it'll do up the hill. I'll just get it up to a nice steady 50. There's no point trying to break run, run speed records. So there we are, without even trying, 55, 56 miles an hour. Ticking over nicely. No excessive revs just pull back in anyway we're nearly up there so if you've enjoyed this video or if you enjoy my videos in general oh, you know ding that like button ring the bell subscribe ask me questions I don't mind I'll do my best to answer everything if I can be helpful I will be but like I said before if you're looking for something with a low seat height that looks cool ain't gonna cost the world and a good stepping stone to your, your second big boy. This could be the one for you. This could be the one for you. Seriously. Just be careful when you go around bends because them pegs, they do touch the floor quite quickly. Anyway, we're back at Damrolls. Thank you to Mark and the gang at Damrolls for finding me another bike. So I'll bring it to an end. This is the lofty biker saying ta-ra for now. Ta-ra!